in the past, but this is my first on-screen appearance. I'm going to review the Sailfish 245 DC. I brought the boat home in April, and in a few months I have over 100 hours on it. This video is in three parts. A quick overview of the boat, the improvements I made on the boat, and the issues I found in the first 100 hours. My first boat was a Regal 2200. I still have a Tidewater 2200 center console. I do all my own work on my boats for a couple reasons. One, because I can. I also trailer the boat and I'm far from a marina. It's expensive to have marinas work on it. It's also difficult even for them to find the time to work on your boat. I'm also fortunate to have a son who is a better fisherman than me and helps with all the big projects on the boat. I'm no expert, but we've rebuilt engines and if I have to do something, I'll figure it out. And that's what I've done here. Overall, I can say that the Sailfish 245 is a great boat. It does what it claims. It goes from family fun to serious fishing with ease. I've had it 50 miles out in the ocean off of New Jersey. I've had it on lakes in Maine. I've had it up the Hudson River. And it will probably find its way to Florida for the winter. I've had it a couple of months. And as a recreational user, user I already have over 100 hours on it. I'm not going to pound anyone's teeth out but we run the boat. My experience is a good test and 100 hours is a good point to look at a boat. I bought the 245 DC from Marine Max in Summers Point, New Jersey, and I would buy it again. Mike was the salesman and I can say Marine Max was great. Every question I had, they answered right away. I did a lot of it through email and I always got an answer within hours, even on a Saturday and occasionally on a Sunday. I was put in touch with mechanics or whomever I needed to get an answer from. The less you do on your own boat, the more you need a good dealer. There is room for improvement with this boat, which would be true of any boat. Most manufacturers focus on what you see, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. My hope is that the industry will continue to improve their boats as they have been and focus on what can't be seen because that's also vitally important to the boater's experience. If you made it this far, that's great, because this is going to be an in the weeds video. It's not an overview. Anyway, right here, you're seeing the uh, boat come home um, just for fun. That's the very first fish we caught on the boat in Raritan Bay. That's probably the second trip, and I forget how big that fish was, but it was great. Here's a great night shot. Uh, using the boat. This is an overhead shot of the boat, although mine has a small sink and counter on the starboard side where this one shows a seat. Compared to similar boats of size and design, this boat has higher gunnels, is a little heavier, has a little deeper V, which makes it a little more suitable for ocean use. I found a 300 horsepower Mercury to be more than ample. I was pleasantly surprised with the hull shot. It did come with a four-bladed prop, and I was able to hit 46 miles per hour, which is exactly what BoatTest.com got, so I guess that's a good thing for both of us. I ordered it with a Merc, because that's what I have on the Tidewater, and I figured it's better to keep it simple. One screw up with the Mercury engine is I did not order the Verado version. It has a much beefier connection to the boat and noticeably less vibration transferred to the hull. I, I saw and signed the invoice, so I guess that's it. But two different people at Marine Max did tell me it was Verada. I water skied with this boat. We all know it's not a slalom ski boat, but for family fun tubing, the ski tow bar is just fine. My family really appreciated the bigger size over my previous boats. So that's my quick overview. Now I'm going to show you the various modifications I did to the boat. First thing I did was add a Lawrence 12 inch multifunction display. Sailfish only offered the Garmin and for the same reason I ordered this boat with a Mercury engine, I ordered it with a Lawrence because that's what my Tidewater has. I just turned 60 and I really didn't want to learn how to use two different multifunction displays. Taking the saws off to a $140,000 boat. Not the thought. Well, 
the lights blinked. <laughs> Heard that? Yeah. <laughs> the wiring in the console was a bit chaotic. I moved some and did what I could to improve it. I added a PVC backer to the door, which I used to attach the engine module, which was wire tied in, and I added a bus bar for additional electric. My next project was the VHF radio, and again I wanted to match what I had in the Tidewater and not what Sailfish offered. They had put in a fish tape, but it ended in the gunnel, and I had to con concoct a tool to reach it. Once I got the tape, it still didn't work as I could not get the cable end to enter the metal frame. I ended up taking the whole top off, sticking the cable in, and pulling it. This was many hours. My next project was rod holders in the bow. You can never have to like rod holders. I'm going to add a trolling motor, which is why I put the two rod holders next to each other and did not get the windlass. These removable rod holders are great. I have them on all three of my boats and I really appreciate being able to take them out and put them in. Sailfish should offer rocket launchers, but since they didn't, I did. I used the loom angle to fasten the rocket launchers. I can put my full weight on them and I find them necessary for me to carry the rods I want. Seemed like a great place to put hangers for dock lines. Marine Max gave me the boat washed and waxed, no issues there, but I did strip that off and put a ceramic coating on. There are hundreds of videos for that, but I will show you a quick demonstration on the glass. I used 3M 303 fabric guard for the bow and cockpit cover and 3M 303 vinyl protectant on the seats. Both seem to be like good products and working fine to date. All right, one of the first things we did is we made a cutting board to go right over the uh, top. Works pretty good, it's all thing. This is by far the cheapest thing on the boat. I used regular one inch PVC fittings to make the raw water hose holder. And yes, there is a drain hole in the bottom of it. You will notice that my great idea mysteriously moved from the center to the port in this picture. That's what we call not paying attention as the center location interfered with the motor when it was tilted up. For 20 bucks, I was able to cover the holes with a solid mercury emblem. This was a great addition to the boat. I made a tackle box storage center. It works great. I think boat outfitters wanted $1,200 for a custom sized one. I spent $200 on the HDPE and a few more dollars on screws and glue. For $130, I got a marine carpet to lay in the back for when we are skiing or swimming. With bare feet, it's far more comfortable when you can land on a carpet. This is the part when I discuss all the things that I fixed in the first 100 hours. The first thing that I noticed conked out was an overhead light. Sailfish sent me two new ones immediately. But when I went to replace them, it turned out to be a loose connection. So I took one of the lights and replaced a small blue light, which was actually installed behind the table in the console on the starboard side. You will notice that these are heat shrink connectors, which are not heat shrunk. That's points off for Sailfish. I shrunk these and a few others, but who knows how many I can't get to and will cause trouble in a few years. 
Another unnecessary issue was how the power steering pump was installed. They put it in so you cannot easily fill it. I removed it and I reinstalled it in an easily accessible location. Mercury has done a superb job of making the engine quiet. At idle, you barely hear it. However, the Uflex power steering is louder than the engine at idle and a bit up from there. My son finds it crazy annoying, but he's in his 20s. At my age, not so much. With a little investigating, I found that the noise actually travels up the gunnels more than it passes through the stern hatch. Here we go with a few more points off sailfish. I learned to check this issue with my tidewater, when after being 10 miles out in the ocean, on the way back, everything died. It took me a few minutes to figure it out with great relief. I'm sorry to say, but loose wires are not acceptable. I used a CRC corrosion inhibitor on everything I could reach. From you can't see it, but the battery charger is buried. I moved it because everyone wants to see the lights and its location was more susceptible to water. The wiring around the battery, like the console, was chaotic. I took what I could, zip tied it, secured it, and bundled the best I could. On my first trip out, the Baitwell pump ingested something, causing it to whine. Baitwell pumps are designed to be easy to change. Not on this boat. This thing is further back than it looks and there's a small set screw that must be removed before the top comes off. This turned out to be a multi-hour job. I ended up reinstalling the pump vertically. Though Baitwell pumps are designed to be installed below the waterline, it has been working. Its original location was above the waterline also. Selfish needs to work on this. There's the same problem with the vacuum pump for the fish box. It's all the way up against the stern, and it's not possible to reach it. This one I'm going to leave until it breaks and then figure it out. I know half the boaters and sailfish guys are going to say there's a sticker that says check bolt torque and all that. Well, I did after about 10 hours of engine time. I mean, I've been around enough nuts to know these were not tightened properly in the first place. The top were crazy loose and the bottom two were just plain loose. The drain is either crushed or crimped. I ran a snake down it and it hits a hard stop. Not sure how that can be fixed. I trailer my boat and the boat strap setup, to say the least, was not ideal. I installed two more eyes which required some dexterity to accomplish, but the new setup is much better. A few other things on this boat. The window washer fluid is a little hard to fill up. I use a funnel and a hose, which isn't all that bad. I did not care how selfish attached the top to the frame. I added some egg corn nuts. When running the boats in even light chop, the bow door would open. I added washers to correct it but that wasn't enough I ended up adding a whole additional latch to keep it shut when I had to take the top off I ran into this problem the nut was jammed up against the mounting plate in addition of the four screws holding the light on one was missing and one was stripped only two were holding just before the boat reached 100 hours the seat became very loose and almost fell off 
multiple screws were loose and I lost two of them. This is my list of improvements. If you want to read them, just hit pause. I will leave with a few observations. If you don't like boats, don't buy a boat. Boats are not cars, they cost more, they break more, and you use them less. Don't buy the boat, buy the dealer. I've heard this before, but it's a good one. If you work on boats, it helps if you have long arms and small fingers. The most expensive way possible to have a fish dinner is on your own boat. Having said that, I wholeheartedly recommend the sailfish. I'm having great fun with it. 